بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continue on in our discussion about the importance of one's heart being present during the prayer and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to perfect our salat to him subhanahu and complete our ibadah and, and have our ibadah accepted by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us of our shortcomings and our many sins. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. In this hadith, which is a very important hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it, it illustrates for us the importance of again of having our hearts present during the prayer and when the salat can actually be Makru or disliked or the time when it is disliked to 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 pray the prayer And let's just see what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and then go to what the ulama say after that about this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam Wali Muslim and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha call it Sami'tu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yaqul لا صلاة بحضرة الطعام طعام ولا هو يدافعه الأخبثان رواه مسلم. In this hadith that was uh, collected in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها as well, where she said that I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, there is no prayer that uh, for the one who whose food has become present or the one who restrains himself from the two filthy things and this is collected in Muslim this hadith here it means that this is the hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam say that the the prayer uh, the the love the, the wording the Prophet ﷺ said said la salat there is no prayer for the one who who uh, that that food is present during the time for prayer and or 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 that they are holding back the filthy things meaning they're holding back akramakum Allah using the restroom either urinating or defecating. So the person who has this need, for example, if you come to the masjid, let's give an example that we can really relate to. Sometimes we come to the masjid and we already know they're praying. Maybe we're missing the first rakah or we missed the first rakah. We just want to catch the jama'ah. But we really have to go to the restroom. It's better to go to the restroom. Make wudu, get rid of, relieve yourself if it is going to disturb your prayer. Not just that you can't, you can hold it. Many of us can hold it, akramakum Allah. But if it disturbs your prayer, it's causing you discomfort. Then you should relieve yourself, akramakum Allah. Then and make wudu, and then come to the prayer. So here's what uh, the uh, the ulama they say. And as we mentioned in the other uh, hadith. It's important for our hearts to be present during the prayer and that the th some of the things that can remove that as we learn from this hadith is for one if we're hungry and thirsty and food becomes present or drink becomes present or if we need to use the restroom and it is uh, something that is busying our our, our, body, our our mind and our body then we should relieve ourselves at Karamakum Allah and then make a new fresh wudu and then pray, join the prayer. The scholars differ over uh, one of the issues related pertinent to this hadith. So the Zahiriya and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahumullah jami'an, they have the view that the prayer because of the left, the Prophet ﷺ said, La Salat, no, there is no prayer. So due to that statement of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they interpret that, they go by the apparent meaning of the hadith by saying 
that the prayer that this has to do with the siha to salat meaning that this has to do with the whether a salat is accepted or not whether it's sound or not so therefore then they say that the person who falls under this hadith meaning that they have they're holding back restraining akramakum allah to use the restroom restraining themselves or their food and drink has become present then their prayer is not uh, valid if they pray while those other things are, are present and this is the statement as we said of the Zahiriya and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah has this view as well the only difference Shaykh al-Islam rahimahumallah they say that uh, Shaykh al-Islam said that uh, the prayer, if the person has a, a haja for food, they really need to have uh, food and drink, then their prayer would be accepted. That's the difference. But the Zahiriya say ala itlaq, mutlaqin. They say in totality that if the food and drink is present and they don't distinguish whether there's a necessity or non necessity or whether it, you have to use the restroom and how bad it's affecting you, but if you if you need, you feel that pressure, you need to use the restroom, that if you pray, your prayer is not accepted. So this is their goal. Their statement is, your prayer is not accepted in that state. Majority of the scholars, however, say that the prayer, the person's prayer is accepted but it's disliked, meaning it's disliked to pray in this st status. And this is because this negates uh, the completeness of the prayer. So they're saying that the statement where the Prophet wasallam said, La Salat, there is no Salat, meaning there is no, the meaning of this statement is, there is no complete Salat. Whereas the other, the Zahiri and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi are saying, there is no salat at all, meaning their salat is batal if they pray in this state. Whereas the jamhur are saying, no, it is disliked. That if you have to really, you go to the bathroom, it's disturbing your prayer and you're praying like that, your prayer is still valid, but your edger is, uh, you, you, you lower your reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, if it is so bad that all you're doing is focusing on the fact that you need to urinate or defecate a Kromok Malah, then perhaps your prayer might not even be accepted by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that's something uh, which is difficult for us to make that judgment. That is with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are ordered to have khushur and tutma'nina and, and, and comfort and, 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 and completeness in the actions of the prayer. So we want to have as much khushur as possible. We don't want to pray in a state where our prayer is iffy. We should be very cautious with issues of tahara, of purification, and issues of prayer. Because that's something we, in our daily life, and it is something which, uh, you know, we are ordered to do, and it is the second pillar of Islam. Some of the benefits the Shaykh mentioned pertaining to this hadith, which we've already more or less discussed, is for one, is that it's disliked uh, if uh, food is present and the per the person needs to eat or drink and they pray in that st status. They pray, uh, take preference to the salat over their food. Then this is disliked, but it's still permissible. Meaning they don't get a sin, but it's better to delay it, especially if you need to eat and drink. And also, this also is... Uh, in relation to uh, the person restraining themselves from needing to go to the restroom. That if it, they have a necessity, uh, you know, they need to use the restroom, but the, instead they enter the prayer with the jama'ah, uh, it is disliked to do this as well. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the importance of having our hearts concentrating on the prayer and having khushur, you know, in the humility and that these are things which are required from us during the prayer. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that it is also um, very 
important for everyone praying to be far away and removed from those things which busy themselves from the remembrance of Allah. So try your best to not enter your prayer and you're busy with things of the dunya. Try to use that when you make your takbir to ihram Enter the prayer with completeness. You know, Allahu Akbar, try to, as if you're surrendering yourself. And I recall someone saying this, and this is a, a, an analogy, not from the scholars or, or anything like this, but it was a kind of a beneficial way of looking at things. And he, he mentioned, he used to say, uh, this particular individual, he said that, you know, when I say Allahu Akbar and I raise my hands in takbir, uh, it's like you're surrendering. You know, you're Allahu Akbar. You know, you said that, you've surrendered. You've uh, uh, given yourself up to meaning you cut yourself off from everything in the dunya. So that's uh, 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 an interesting way, an, uh, an external way of looking things, which is not mentioned. Of course, I haven't heard any of the ulama say anything like this or anything, but this is just kind of a, uh, just a, a benefit that maybe might help you uh, when beginning to pray to kind of reflect on this factor, that as if you're just surrendering to your Lord. Because in this dunya, if we encounter the police or we encounter uh, a threat, we often raise our hands and surrender. You know, raising your hands is a well-known thing in the dunya of surrendering. So why not surrender your hearts to your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that, as we mentioned in the other hadith, that things like having your food present and having a need for your food and drink and it's present, or the need to use the restroom, akramakum Allah, that those are uh, excusable reasons for missing the Salat al-Jama'ah. Meaning, if those things busy you from making it to Salat al-Jama'ah for the men that are trying to attend the congregational prayer, then that's an excuse. That's an excusable, acceptable excuse to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala in his Sharia. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is that the ulama, they have consensus uh, that, uh, that regarding ibadah and worship, that a person must be, uh, they must have their intellect, their aql. You know, have the intellectual capacity and the ability to perform these deeds of worship. Prayer, fasting, hajj, jihad, whatever it is, that's a duty that you need to fulfill to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must have the ability to do so. And the ulama have consensus on that. They're in total agreement with that. And they use as some of the evidences, some of the uh, ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقِيمُ salat li dhikri." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and perform the prayer. Allah orders us, perform the prayer uh, for my remembrance. And the only way you can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with your intellect being in place, that you, you, you're conscious of what you're doing. So do not be doing acts of worship and you're not conscious of them. For example, even the person, there's no doubt we should strive our best to keep our tongues wet with dhikr, like the, the, the Salaf used to do. You know, constantly remembering Allah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, subhanAllah, wa bihamdihi, subhanAllah, la ilaha illallah. You know, making dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, as much as possible, as long as you're not in a place like in the restroom or what have you. However, even with that dhikr, your heart should be present. So if you're playing a video game and you're making dhikr, Perhaps your heart is in, involved in the video game more than the dhikr. So the point is, is to have the heart present. And that is a, a, a part of having our worship uh, accepted and our worship complete, is having our hearts uh, present. And another ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَكُونْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And do not be of those who are, uh, you know, basically unconscious or unaware those people who are unaware of what they're doing. So if you're worshiping Allah and you're not aware of what you're doing, then how is it you can have that accepted by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
And then in a hadith that was narrated in Abu Dawood when Isai with Ibn Hibban Marfu'an, meaning it uh, was uh, narrated on, on the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een or uh, on the Sahaba to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> which he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al-abda li yusalli salat la yuktub luhu ushraha wa la sudusaha that verily a slave uh, prays the prayer and verily there will be a slave that prays the prayer and that they won't even have the reward of a tenth of it or even a seventh or even a a, a or a third uh, or a sixth of it a sixth so uh, meaning that a person would pray a prayer because they're not attentive to the prayer or they're not giving the prayer its right, you know, fulfilling and completing their salat in the way they should be. Maybe their heart's not present. Maybe their actions are not complete. What have you. They're praying like they're running a race. Then in this situation, perhaps they might not even get a tenth of the reward, nor even a sixth of the reward. And the ulama, they differ over the soundness, the authenticity of this hadith. Uh... And so forth, but the meaning uh, is 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 important for us here. And so those are just some of the important things that in our ibadah we need to have our hearts present. We need to have khashia, khushu, you know, fearfulness, humility before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and those things like needing to use the restroom or needing to uh, eat or drink, having that necessity to to need those things can take us and detract us from completing our prayer in a proper way. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya Muhammad.